Hello and welcome to the Jason Widero Show. I figured what better thing is there to do during all this coronavirus madness than talk about the Constitution of the United States. Let's be real. This is a really long document with a lot of information and a lot of decisions made in it based on events that led up to the writing of the document. But I'm not here to go into all of the parts of the Constitution. There's one specific section that I just wanted to talk about and have some interest in right now. One thing that's important to understand is the Constitution. I might be considered an interesting person because I have a lot of interest in the true meaning of things. For example, when the Constitution of the United States was written, I tried to think in the context of the time period based on my education of that time period. Meaning that if I looked at the Constitution today and just read it based on what's happening in today's world, it might not make a lot of sense. But I think one and fundamental thing to understand is what the Constitution is by its name. So, you know, Constitution is a makeup of something. It's principles and fundamentals, ideas and everything that collectively all together make a whole. And as you probably know, and if you don't know, that's okay too, the Constitution is made up of many different pieces and parts over many varying parts of time. But collectively, it's all one piece of information. And... Fundamentally, at its basic level, it's the document that all the laws of the United States and our land are based on, and all court decisions and everything related to law is based fundamentally on this document. And no, I'm not here to get into everything that could be argued on that. That's not my point of this video. I'm looking at this more just from a learning perspective for myself and for anyone who might be interested in the dialogue and discussion about it. So with what I just described, within the Constitution, again, which is this document that's made up of all these different parts and pieces, the parts and pieces that define the basic laws of the country that we live in, there's something called amendments. When you amend something, you generally add to it with the idea to improve it, make it better, make it more clear, or something about that. So in the Constitution of the United States, there are amendments. And all throughout the Constitution itself, there's what's called articles. Articles could be thought of almost the same way we think about a news article, meaning it has a specific topic and then a description, a more detailed description about the topic. And in this video... I wanted to talk about Article Number 1 in an amendment to the Constitution. So again, the amendment is added things. It's things that were clarified, added later. And if you're looking at the screen over here, you can see there's a bunch of different ones. And of course, they're listed in Roman numerals, which isn't, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4. They're a different characterization of numbers that we use historically for these types of documents. A lot of times in legal documents, we see these Roman numerals. It looks like an I and two I's and three capital I's for three and all that, the way that it looks. So the Constitution is not something you should be afraid of because of all the fancy terminology used in it. Because once you get the basic idea of how it's put together and what the basic things mean in it, you can actually start to make some sense out of it. And again, I'm not creating this video to get into a debate about the Constitution and what everything means and all that. I'm just reading it for my interpretation and some thoughts I have about one specific point today. And that is article number one. So that's the topic, right? Topic number one here, which is highlighted. You can see on the screen. And this is related to the freedom of expression and religion. This is probably... This is definitely one of the big ones that you hear about a lot. You hear about, oh, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, which, of course, are extremely important and a major part of what this country was based on. 
which is why we can pretty much talk about whatever we want, say whatever we want, but that's kind of what I wanted to touch on in this video. First thing I'm gonna do is just read through this part by part by part, and I'm going to tell you my interpretation as I read it. So first part, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. And if you don't know what Congress is, it's basically a big group of people divided into different groups that are in the government, the federal government, meaning Washington, D.C., and it's not allowed to make a law that establishes a religious belief system. In other words, the government can't come in and say, by law, here is the religion that we are. Now, that doesn't mean, historically, there aren't specific religions that are an, integ an integral and intertwined part of the belief systems of the founding members of the country and the residents that lived here. And this is something that a lot of people, I've heard a lot of arguments about. You know, one, one person saying our country was based on a religion, and then someone else coming back with, well, no, Congress can't make any law based on religion. So you get kind of this back and forth, back and forth. But I say just look at it for what it is. Our government does not make it law, um, any one religion a law. Meaning you and I and any of our friends and anyone else we know do not have to, by law, follow a specific religion. So in my estimation, what I understand of that is that we have a lot of freedom on that point, which is really cool. Because if you've done any historical studies before the United States came along, you might find out some time periods where if you didn't believe a specific religion, you could be punished for that. So again, I'm not here to debate religion. That's not why I'm creating this video. It's just, again, understanding what the purpose of this statement is in relation to religion and the freedom and rights we have as individuals in this country to practice the religion of our choice. And I think that's a very important thing. Okay, so good. We got that one out of the way. Let's go on to the next point. So the next part of this is or abridging the freedom of speech. So it's, it says again, ab or abridging the freedom of speech. Okay, so in law, basically it means to impose a restriction on. In other words, Americans can pretty much say whatever they want. Again, that's a pretty remarkable freedom that we have. There are even times in somewhat modern history where some countries, if you say or communicate a specific thing, you can be punished severely. So the difference in the United States is we have this freedom. Now, this is a point that I really want to make on this because this is something I've put a lot of thought about, and it comes down to a really simple thing. Just because we have freedom of speech really doesn't make it okay to freely say whatever you want whenever you want. In other words, just because you're allowed to do something, I don't personally believe that it's okay or called for sometimes. And again, this is one of those points that's argued a lot. And when I was a kid, I remember we would be in the neighborhood and be calling each other names and whatever, you know, trying to irritate each other all friends, you know, being idiots. And, you know, we would start saying, you know, sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never hurt me. And we would just say it over and over and over and over again, dry, driving the other person crazy, basically. And we would do that, you know. But my point is, is that just because we have the right doesn't mean that you have to exert it in a negative way. And that's why when I read documents like the Constitution of the United States, which we're reading right now, I really like to look at what the intention of what's being said there is. And yes, there's a lot of historical documentation and political references and everything to the individuals who created this document and what their intentions were. And of course, there were a lot of contrasting views, meaning there were a lot of members that helped create this document that have different viewpoints, different belief systems different ways of looking at things, different 
backgrounds, different education. It was a very diverse group of people, which made it all the more applicable and important on some of these points. Bottom line, it, it truly does irritate me when I see somebody saying really nasty, mean, evil things that are completely unnecessary just because they're allowed to do it and their go-to is it's freedom of speech I can say what I want it's really a cop-out it's totally cowardly and truthfully it's not American to me meaning it's my personal belief based on my education my understanding of this document and the individuals that wrote it the purpose of this was not so that you could just irritate and upset people it was so that we could communicate something important that needed to be said without being punished for it. Which goes into the next point, as we can see here, or of the press. And we all know the press, the media. Particularly in these times when we have the coronavirus epidemic happening, reading headlines, all kinds of headlines, all different things being said, a lot of noise out there by the press and they're allowed to and entitled to do that again just because this is my personal belief just because you have the right doesn't mean you need to make things more complicated or confuse things or make things more fearful than they should be I'll let you make your own judgment about the press but very rarely do I read a story in a newspaper or anywhere online that doesn't incite some kind of anger or upset or something like that. And if we look at the condition that we're in right now with this coronavirus epidemic, I mean, you could say it's pretty normal. We have a lot of political arguing and back and forth, and it's really nasty. And again, I'm not taking one side on this. I'm taking my position that is just because we have the right to communicate freely doesn't mean it should be abused and should not be used as a tool to weaponize others or upset others or create controversy or confusion or fear unnecessarily. Okay, so let's move on to the next point. Or the right of the people, of the people peaceably to assemble. And I'm sure you've heard this before, but this is just people are allowed to come together. Now, in this coronavirus epidemic, technically, because of the contagion of the virus, we're not allowed to come together. And I'm sure there's some, and there are, and I've seen some people arguing out there that it's unconstitutional to say we're not allowed to assemble or come together. I think there's an important balance of common sense here and our constitutional right, which means technically we could probably get together if we're all outside somewhere and we're six feet apart and we're just being smart and you know, maybe we have a megaphone and we're using it, you know, one person's using it to give a message or something. I don't know. And of course, the internet and our technology and our phones is an easy way to communicate where we don't have to be right next to each other. So we can assemble that way too. You know, and assemble just means to come together, obviously, a group of people coming together, assemble. And the primary purpose, you know, behind all this freedom of communication, assembly, and everything else is the last part, you know, petition, you know, asking the government uh, to correct something, to fix something, to do something, to change something, whatever it might be. We have the right to contact our government and make requests. We have the right to come as a group together and discuss things and look at the way we can make improvements to our laws and look at the way we can change, you know, um, government for the future. So this one that I'm reading again is, is called Article 1. Article is just a section of, just think of it like a news article. It has a topic and then it has a description, a more broad description below it. But it's a legal term related to legal documents like the Constitution of the United States. This one we're looking at, Article Number 1, is referred to most commonly as First Amendment or Amendment Number 1. And the basic description, as you can see, is freedom of expression and religion. All right, well, thank you for watching. That's all I have for you today on this. I am going to be, every day during this coronavirus epidemic, I am educating myself more. 
I'm rereading things I've read. I'm going back and studying and spending my time working on projects that I have with clients. But it's a very interesting time we're in right now, and I think that it does all of us some very good to find some other things to do than sit down and just read the news all day. Because one for one, every person that I know that's doing that is seeming to be all riled up and upset and, you know, then going on Facebook and, you know, pounding the keyboard at somebody. And, and I just don't think that's a healthy thing to do. I think we need to be, uh, you know, creative, smart about how we approach this, tactical, and continually educated, meaning really understanding, meaning the more understanding we have of what's going on right now and what we can individually do to feel like we're coming to a better desired outcome in all of this, whether it's talking about getting back to work, how are we going to do that? How are we going to reopen businesses? This First Amendment freedom of speech point definitely is applicable to that in, in my view. So anyway, I hope this was helpful. I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to be publishing a video probably every day during, during the time period of this coronavirus pandemic and just sharing you know, my thoughts with you on what I'm doing and um, things I'm learning and relearning. And I hope some of it's helpful to you. And if not, I guess that's okay too. So thanks, thanks for taking the time to watch this and um, I'll see you around.